if he is mabait, even if he is guapo, it doesn't matter. Even if he is rich. And the problem is that we struggle with that. We struggle with that. We don't realize how dangerous it is to even consider a suitor who is not yet a believer. The moment they say unbeliever, the moment you don't share the same faith, I mean out of the ballpark, there is nothing else to talk about. Zero. You are out. Even before strike one, you are out. You can't even enter the playing field. See? But our problem is oftentimes we look at the outside. He dresses well. She's pretty. She's very nice. You know, even a black widow can be nice. But once you get married, I tell you, you know why it's called black widow? Right? After they get married, boom, she's a widow. See? And, and that's what happens. They're very nice because you haven't said yet, I do. Once you do, you're done. You know why? Because you did. So you, you got to be careful. I'm telling you, ladies, you know, let me tell you something now. And gentlemen, of course, singles. This ministry, meaning Pastor Jude, Pastor Yoli, Pastor Arnold, and myself, okay, we are committed to you. Ladies, if the one pursuing you is a player, I eat players for breakfast. Okay? They have no chance. Do not make the mistake of introducing them to me. Because I will slice and dice, shake and bake. Now, they are welcome to come to church, definitely. You can introduce me to them as long as they're not making legal. They're making legal, I tell you, I will be the divorce lawyer before anything can happen. Okay? I'm te- I cannot impress on you enough how dangerous it is to your spiritual health to consider someone who is not saved. You are scheduling trouble in your future. And that is a promise. Marami naman guapo dyan na born again. Diba? Look to your left. Look to your right. And then tell that person, Oh nga! <laughs> See? Anyway, that's not in my notes. Let's... Let's move on. Okay? Now, let, let's, let's go to the... But now, we have been... Verse 6. We have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The letter here talks about the law. The letter kills. Right? It talks about that. And the Spirit here talks about grace. And what it's saying here is we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. In other words, the law was not the one that died. We died. See? We died. So the law held us captive. And then we died in Christ. That's why in Romans 6 it says, if we died with Him, then certainly we shall also be, we shall be raised with Him in newness of life. So we died to the law. In other words, the law has no legal right to touch us anymore. If you back up to Romans 7, verses 1 to 4, it talks about how when you marry someone, you are legally married to that person until they die. Then you are free to marry again. But what it says here is instead of the spouse dying, you died. You were married to the law. But you died. And then you were raised again, which means you are no longer legally attached to the law. You can now be married to someone else legally, and that is grace. You are now married to grace. I am married to grace. 
See? And that's why the Lord changed my name from Joey to Joseph. Because Joseph means he shall add. So every time we go as a couple, he shall add grace. That's why I walk in. I'm serious. That's what the Lord showed. I didn't see it before. You know, I didn't see it before. Until the Lord showed me that when you put our names together, just like, just like uh, who's that guy? Zechariah and Elizabeth. You know, and they had John, right? Uh, Zechariah means the Lord shall remember. And Elizabeth means the promises of God in the house of God. See, so when the Lord remembers His promises in His house, John means grace. See, then grace comes forth. When He remembers His promises, he, the fruit is always grace. You know, that's why God likes to put names. Names are important. Okay, names are important. So if your name is uh, S. A. Tan, you know, I suggest you change your name. <laughs> don't change it to D. E. Ville. Okay? <laughs> it's just as bad. Now, look at this. But now we have been delivered from the law. Christ set us free from the law in that He killed us, as it were, but the law actually killed us. You marry the law, and then the law kills you. That's what happens when you marry an unbeliever. Okay? You marry an unbeliever, that handsome or pretty girl or handsome guy, and once you're married, they kill the life out of you. That's why you got to be careful. Now, if you are married to an unbeliever, let me tell you something. Divorce is not the answer. Because God is able to make all things work together for your good. Amen? Amen. So don't kill your unbelieving spouse. <laughs> it's called murder. Huh? You can now claim that person in Christ. So now, for those of you single, puede pala eh. Diba? Then I'll just pray hard. You know what? It's true. Yes, puede. If you do that, it's just that when you marry an unbeliever, knowing already the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, then it's not a sin that God cannot forgive. Right? It is forgivable. But what price will you have to pay? What suffering will you have to go through until that one gets saved? See? That's the only thing. And so God wants you to have an abundant life, not abundant sorrow. Okay? I'm serious about that. So that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit. See, when we understand that we have died to the law, only then can you serve in the newness of Spirit. Serving under the law will only be, make it a burden. That's why even now, I don't say anymore, I have a burden for, let's say, Africa. I have a burden for the poor. No, it's not a burden anymore. It's not a burden because the Christian life is light and easy. He says, all of you that are burdened and heavy laden, come to me. Let me take that, I'll give you rest. So you and I, no more burdens. Amen? Amen. No more burdens. Life is light and easy. See, you need to, no, no, pastor, maybe you, but not me. No, you got to be like there is light. You got to speak that so that it comes to pass. So we say life is is light and easy. Life is good. Amen? Life is good. Life is always good. Yes, there may be some tribulations along the way, but even Paul calls it light and momentary afflictions because they will not last forever. Amen? Now let's move on. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? See, look at this. Certainly not. He could not emphasize that enough. On the contrary, I would not have known covetousness unless the law uh, had said, you shall not covet. Now, covetousness is not a word we use anymore today. Another, a more contemporary word is lust. Okay? Don't lust after your neighbor's wife and your neighbor's goods. That, that's really what it means. Tenth commandment. Now look at this. Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known lust unless the law had said, you shall not lust or you shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment or the law, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was what? Dead. So you want to be able to deal with that sinful passion? Stay apart from the law. See, apart from the law, sin was dead. When you try and obey the law, you arouse all those sinful passions all over again. The very same sinful passions that cry